up you guys it's me Gayla Larise and today we are talking all about counts you guys have highly requested this video from me and I've realized ever since I used to play the piano as a kid which I cannot do now so don't ask me uh, I've realized that I am really good at figuring out music hearing music and that really helps me a lot with dance so in this video I'm gonna share with you guys some really basic music structure stuff and then we're actually gonna take a piece of music break it down into beats and then I will show you guys how to use that information to help you find counts when you're dancing. So we're gonna cover a lot today, but hopefully this is gonna be pretty helpful for you guys. If this is your first time here, please consider sticking around. We talk a lot about dance here. I share my choreography here. We love dance and creative things all around this channel. And if you have not already, please give this video a thumbs up, especially if it's helpful. And yeah, let's jump in. So first, let's talk music structure. Understanding how to predict patterns in music structure will help you big time, not only when learning choreography, but also when it comes to freestyling. So if you have not checked out my previous dance tip videos on picking up choreography and freestyling, definitely check out those after this one. If you look at a piece of sheet music, the first thing you're probably gonna notice is that there's a little fraction in the front of the music, and that's gonna be your time signature. Now, this is going to tell you what the rhythm is of the music and how the music should be played. Most pop music that you listen to is going to be in a four fourth time, but time signatures can also be a three four, which is typically a waltz, which gives you that down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, up type of rhythm that you would hear, for example, in the song My Favorite Things by Julie Andrews. So this is what drives the rhythm of the song. And the beats and the instruments are all placed on top of that time signature to give the song its melody. Since most of you guys who watch my videos either dance to pop music or hip hop, 4-4 four, four is typically gonna be the time signature that you're gonna come across when you're dancing. So now let's take a song and break it down into its parts so we can start to figure out what the counts are. This song is called Seize It by Tape Machines and this is a song that I'm gonna use throughout this video to help illustrate these different concepts to you guys. The first part of the music that you're probably going to notice is the bass and it's this part of the music. This bass is oftentimes played by a drum of some sort and it's a very low drum. You know that little kicky thing where they kick it and it hits? That's what that is. So that's usually how you find your bass. Now, when I'm teaching littles how to dance, when I used to teach my little preschoolers, this is often what I teach them to march to. So if you are a dance teacher or someone who is looking into teaching small people eventually, try having them march on the beat. And that really helps kids to start to find rhythm in music. So let's say that each of these bass beats is going to be a number. Then it would kind of sound like this. Now let's take another listen and see what other sound we find. That sounds almost like a little hi-hat, a little t So if you listen to how it's arranged with the bass, you'll find that it's in between each one of those bass counts, each one of those numerical counts. And these are gonna give you your and counts. So when you're listening to the music, it would be one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. And when it comes to timing, those are the same distance away from each other as your single numerical counts. So two ands are the same distance apart as a one and a two. So let's take another listen. And those are your ands. Now, keep in mind that these and counts can be broken down even smaller into one yenda, two yenda. It would actually sound like this if you're counting it out. One yenda, two yenda, three yenda, four yenda, five yenda, six yenda, seven yenda, eighty. Try that with me. Ready, set, go. One yenda, two yenda, three yenda, four yenda, five yenda, six yenda, seven yenda, eighty. Seven yenda, eighty. It's hard to say that. Now this song is really fast, so chances are if you're dancing to it, you probably wouldn't be dancing that fast to it. You probably wouldn't be playing off of those tiny in-between counts, those quarter counts. But for slower songs, it's definitely possible. So keep that in mind that below the ands comes an even 
faster, smaller count, which are those EN does. Now, let's listen for another sound. So to me, whatever sound that was sounds kind of like a plucking sound, which is why I was doing this because it's kind of like pluck, I don't know. That was what I was getting from it. Now, if you notice, these plucking sounds are not as evenly spaced out as our numerical sounds or our and counts that we talked about earlier. But if you really pay attention, it's using both of them. Now this is called syncopation. That means that the music is playing off of different types of counts in the music. Those kind of popped up in different places. However, they get counts too. So find your bass first. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, I know we've been talking about parts of the music that get smaller and smaller and smaller widths apart when it comes to the timing of the music, but I also realize there's a clap in this music. Now let's listen to the clap and see where it comes based on where that bass is that gave us our numerical counts. Now, if you notice, those claps actually come on every even number of those base numerical counts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And these claps are evenly spaced out apart, just like those base counts, but they have more distance between them, which is why you're clapping on two and four, because it's giving you more time. <laughs> Now let's apply this to dancing. So first let's start off with that bass beat again. That's gonna give us our numerical counts. This is your five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Your accent is on the number. This a lot of times is what you're gonna see when you see a groove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. In the music, it's with the bass. Five, six, seven, eight. Now let's add those ands in. One and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. Now, something you'll notice is that when you add your and counts, the one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight, it's actually going to speed up the tempo of how you dance. So if you're simply dancing on the numerical counts, you're gonna stay pretty slow. However, if you add your ands, it's one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight. It makes the movement faster. So as you're dancing, you actually end up dancing faster even though the rhythm of the music has not changed. Does that make sense? And of course, we can't forget that clap sound that's in there as well. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you notice, again, that changes the speed and the tempo of your dancing. It slows it down. One, two, three, four versus one, two, three, four. It changes how you move. So when you're dancing to something and you're unsure what your count is, or if you're on a numerical count or an and, first ask yourself, how fast am I dancing? Because if you're dancing really, really fast, then chances are you're dancing probably more on the ands and less on an exact number. Now, if you're trying to figure out the count for a specific move and you know it's on an and count, but you're not sure which one, I found that it's much easier first to find out where your one and your four are in the music. Once you find your one and your four, then you found the base of your music, do the choreography and see where the move falls. Does it fall directly on a number or does it fall somewhere in between? So if it falls somewhere in between, it could be on an and, it could be on a 
three E and a, four E and a, you gotta find where it is, but if you dance it and you dance it based off of that base one count, you can kind of locate where the move should go in the music. So now let's try a quick exercise. I'm going to improv and I'm going to play on different parts of the music. And I want you to find which part of the music I'm playing off of. And from there, it would be very easy for you to find the counts. So let's go try that. And that is it you guys. We talked about a whole lot in this video. I tried to keep it as short as possible, but I did also want it to actually help. When you start to dance and freestyle, you'll notice that you tend to play off of certain parts of the music more often than others. I love a good and. I love to dance on the ands. But I wanna hear what you guys love. What part of the music do you typically dance off of? Do you typically dance off of the numerical counts, the ands, or, or do you syncopate in between? Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, you guys, so you can see more of these dance tips videos and all the other dance stuff I got going on. I'll see you guys in my next video next weekend. Later. Mm -hmm.